in a fixed pitch propeller, you just have a tachometer showing you RPMs. And then in a constant speed propeller aircraft, you have manifold pressure and a tachometer. Well, in the turbine, there's a little bit more. You still have a gauge showing you propeller RPMs, but it's now instead labeled NP. And manifold pressure is more or less replaced with torque and ITT, but then you also have percent NG in there. So what the heck do all of those mean? Well, luckily they aren't as complicated as they sound. Let's walk through each of them, starting with torque. So torque is measured and displayed in foot pounds, which is kind of a weird concept, but if you imagine a one foot long lever and you put one pound of pressure on the end of that lever, the resulting twisting motion is one foot pound of torque. Now, if you applied two pounds of pressure on the end of that one foot lever, that would be two foot pounds of torque, one times two. Now, if you made the lever two feet long instead of one foot long, and you applied that same two pounds of pressure, you now have four foot pounds of torque. It's basically just a combined measure of force and leverage. So as you're adjusting the power lever, one of the things that's going to move on your engine instruments is torque. Torque is kind of your primary power selection tool. Now you can use this for power settings similar to how you would manifold pressure on an approach. For example, when you're in the pattern, 600 pounds of torque for the Kodiak will keep you nice and level going in the pattern. And then as you're descending, 450 pounds or so uh, usually puts you right on the glide path. And so you can, you can use it to peg your power settings. You also wanna make sure you don't over torque the engine, which we'll talk about here in a minute, but that's torque. Next is ITT, which is inner turbine temperature. It's basically the combustion gas temperature of the engine or how hot is the engine running. It's not really your primary power indication, but it's something you're referencing for power settings to make sure you don't over temp the engine. Next is NP, which gives you propeller RPMs. If you've flown a constant speed propeller before, you'll be familiar with this concept. Basically, once you give it enough throttle, the propeller governor will kick in and it'll end up capping or limiting the propeller RPMs just by controlling the angle of the propeller blade. It's pretty cool. So at that point, you can instead control RPMs with the prop control lever. Now this might sound more confusing than it is. I promise once you get used to it, it's really, really intuitive. Now I did an entire video just dedicated to flying a constant speed propeller. So if it's a new concept for you or you need a refresher, I'll put a link to that video down in the description. And finally, NG is your gas generator speed, which references the rotation speed of the compressor section of the engine. Now this one's a little bit different than the other three engine instruments we just covered because this one isn't actually a fixed number, it's actually displayed as a percentage, and it's a percentage of the design maximum. So for example, in the Kodiak, 100% NG represents 37,500 RPMs. It's spinning really, really fast. So if they were to show this gauge as 36,000 RPMs out of 37,500 RPMs, one, that's a lot of numbers to show on there, and two, that would be kind of tough computing for the pilot. So instead, it just shows it as a percentage, so percent NG. So those are the definitions, but here is practically how you would use and reference torque, ITT, NP, and NG for each phase of flight. Now it might vary slightly from aircraft to aircraft, but my experience is in the Kodiak 100, which is a 10 seat, 750 horsepower, all purpose Bush aircraft, it is awesome. So during startup, you'll reference both percent NG and ITT a lot. When you first engage the starter, you'll notice NG will start climbing. In the Kodiak 100, once you're at or above 14% NG, you can then introduce fuel. If you introduce and ignite fuel before reaching 14% NG, you could overtemp the engine because there isn't enough cool air flowing through the engine just yet. Now, once you introduce fuel, ITT will start climbing because the fuel has been lit and combustion is occurring. You'll reference ITT to make sure it doesn't exceed limitations, which would be called a hot start. And then you're also monitoring percent NG to make sure it doesn't stall out and that it's continuing to climb. If it stalled out, this would be called a hung start. And if either occurred, a hot start or a hung start, you'd cut the fuel and abort the startup process. But assuming everything looks normal, you continue the starting process until you achieve 52% NG, at which point you can disengage the starter and the engine is now fully started. Now, in case that sounds like a lot, I wanna show a clip from a real recent startup here and remove my commentary just to show you that it's not as complicated as it sounds. Okay, ready if you are. Okay, ready, okay. 
Now, once you reach takeoff, your prop will be full forward. And so in the Kodiak, this means 2200 RPMs shown on NP. And as you introduce takeoff power, you can't just firewall the throttle like you might be used to in your piston aircraft. But instead, you have to increase the throttle while monitoring torque and ITT to make sure you don't over torque or over temp the engine. Now, generally speaking, down low, you'd reach your torque limitation before reaching your temperature limitation. While up high, it's actually the opposite where typically you'd reach your temperature limitation before you reach your torque limitation. So depending on the situation, this would be called either being temperature limited or torque limited. Or another way of saying it is that you temp out before you torque out, or you torque out before you temp out. Just depends on the scenario. You're basically just increasing your throttle on takeoff and making sure to not over torque or over temp the engine. And shortly after takeoff, while you're in the climb, you reduce the propeller RPMs to 2000 using the prop lever, and NP will show 2000. And at this point, nothing's changed on the throttle. You're basically still selecting your throttle settings based on torque and ITT limitations. And then in cruise and descent, it's mostly the same here, where you're mainly just using the throttle lever and monitoring torque and ITT. Basically, you're deciding how hard to push the engine without over-torquing or over-temping it. And then you're also keeping in mind fuel efficiency. Since there's no mixture to lean here in a turboprop, if you want to burn less fuel, you either got to fly higher or pull the engine back. And before landing, you'd go back to full forward on the prop, just like you would in a piston aircraft, and NP will go back up. Now, since your throttle is pretty pulled back during this phase, torque and ITT are both pretty low, and so you're not really in danger of exceeding limitations. So you're not monitoring it uh, in that way, like you're going to over torque or over temp it but a really helpful way to use torque, like I mentioned earlier, is that it can be used to peg some power settings for a stabilized approach. So in the Kodiak, for me, 600 pounds keeps you really stabilized in the pattern, and when I'm descending, 450 pounds is kind of my anchor point for the descent on the approach. Now, you might have noticed that we haven't mentioned percent NG in a while, so where does that come into play mid-flight? Well, you don't really use NG to peg power settings like you might on torque, like I just mentioned, but where it becomes really, really helpful is in the event that you lose engine power. If you lose engine power, your first scan is to NG because if it rolls back and stabilizes around some sort of idle, then you know the engine is still running, but you've experienced what's called a rollback. It's intuitive, it rolled back to idle. Now, without getting into too much detail here, the throttle on your turboprop works a little bit differently than it does in your piston in that it also uses a bit, uses, I said that kind of weird. <laughs> it uses a pneumatic system and a mechanical system to adjust the throttle. So the pneumatic just meaning air. So if that pneumatic system fails, and there's different reasons it can fail, then your throttle lever just doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. And you can instead use what's called your EPL or your emergency power lever, which is right next to it, to instead control the throttle. The only downside of the EPL is that it's really, really sensitive. But on the other hand, in the event of a loss of engine power, you notice that NG is continuing to go down and down and down and down and down. It rolls past idle. You know that the engine is no longer running and you have a different problem and you might need to try an air restart or if you're low enough, you might be looking for a place to land. So NG is a super helpful gauge anytime you have engine problems. Now, it might seem like there's a lot going on here, but I promise, and I can say this from experience, after a few flights, it'll make a lot more sense because you really realize there's not a whole lot going on. You're still using your throttle lever just like you would in a constant speed prop, just looking at torque and ITT to make sure you don't exceed limitations. The prop lever you're not doing very much with, and NP is basically just like your RPM gauge, your tachometer, like you're used to. And you're really only adjusting that shortly after takeoff and before landing, so there's not a whole lot to do there. And then NG, you're using primarily during startup for some important reasons, and then you're monitoring it for the health and status of the engine. So once you get a few flights under your belt, it'll be a lot easier. And to help make it easier, I put an entire video together talking about how to fly a turboprop in every single phase of flight. I think it'll provide a lot of practical application for these terms we just covered, torque, ITT, NP, and NG. I think it's a really helpful video and it's on the screen right now. So I'll see you there.